Hello, my name is Aaron Cohen. I'm a neurosurgeon. I've been involved in the care of um, glossopharyngeal neuralgia, trigeminal neuralgia, hemifacial spasm, or other cranial nerve compression syndrome for the past 20 years. I've performed over 600 operations for these disorders, and I'm very honored and happy to be able to talk to you about glossopharyngeal neuralgia today. This form of neuralgia or pain really consists of recurring attacks of stabbing pain in the ears, tongue, tonsils, and or beneath the jaw. This pain is triggered by actions such as swallowing or yawning, and it may be due to compression of the glossopharyngeal nerve. It's a nerve in the back of the skull or head which comes off the brain stem. The glossopharyngeal neuralgia, fortunately, is very rare. It affects less than two to seven people per one million individuals. It's most commonly seen in adults older than 50 years of age, and it's commonly on the left side. What is neuralgia? It's a form of pain that is along the course of a nerve. It's episodic, it's electrical shock. It has a cutaneous uh, stimulus. In other words, touching, swallowing, or other form of uh, feelings that lead to this electrical shock in part of the face, head, or elsewhere. What are the common symptoms? These are recurrent episodes of electrical shocks that are in the ear, base of the tongue, tonsils, or at the level of the angle of the jaw. And again, yawning, sneezing, or coughing are the stimuli or the cutaneous feelings that lead to generation of the electrical shock. Very much less common symptoms are loss of consciousness, seizures, sudden loss of heart function that can occur in patients with a blood vessel irritating the um, um, nerve leading to glossopharyngeal neuralgia. What are the tests involved? The first and most important test is uh, magnetic resonance imaging that can check for a blood vessel or a tumor near, near, near the glossopharyngeal nerve. Also the swab test, which is an attempt to trigger the pain episode by touching the back of the throat with a swab, can confirm the diagnosis and the, uh, applying a topical anesthetic can relieve the pain. Unfortunately, there's no exact test that can really diagnose glossopharyngeal neuralgia. It's the clinical history that leads to the correct diagnosis. But correct diagnosis is actually the most important part of the treatment for you. What are the treatment options? Medications, radiosurgery or radiation, radiofrequency rhizotomy, and most importantly, microvascular decompression surgery and even a combination of the above may be used for treatment of this pain syndrome. So let's talk about medications. The initial treatment is with anti-epileptic medication, such as carbamazepine, Tegretol, or gabapentin or Neurontin that can control the pain, but often the control can be temporary or the level of the medicine required is so much that leads to side effects. If the pain persists, an increased dosage or alternative drugs can be added. Patients are usually monitored with blood tests if the drug is within safe levels and it's not causing changes in the blood counts. And as I mentioned, unfortunately, this mode of therapy is not effective in many patients. Let's talk about radiosurgery. It's concentrated beam of radiation that are aimed at the glossopharyngeal nerve to make the nerve not to generate those pain signals. It takes up to an hour. Um, it, the symptoms of pain may go away weeks after the radiotherapy or radiosurgery because that's really the amount of time it takes for radiation to take effect on the nerve. And uh, patients usually experience gradual pain relief and still medication may be used in the interim or after radiation has taken effect. Radiofrequency rhizotomy is a minimally invasive procedure that involves controlled destruction of the nerve and the patient is typically awake during several portions of the procedure to identify the portion of the nerve that's causing pain and usually patients can go this home the same day. 
The complications could be hoarseness, difficulty swallowing, dry cough, vocal cord paralysis, decreased hearing, or even cerebrospinal fruit leak. The most definitive therapy is microvascular decompression surgery. This is creating a coin sized opening in the skull behind your ear to expose the nerve, and then a cushion or a Teflon patch implant is placed between the nerve and the artery compressing the nerve. And this relieves the root of the problem that's causing the pain. And if no offending vessel is found, you can in fact, or the surgeon can in fact, cut the nerve or portion of the nerve to be able to relieve the pain. How are the outcomes? Uh, a microvascular decompression surgery is quite effective and leads to pain freedom in most patients who undergo the surgery. And in fact, this form of surgery remains the most effective form of therapy in select patients that are for sure suffering from this pear syndrome and are young enough and uh, healthy enough to undergo surgery. So overall, the glossopharyngeal neuralgia is very rare. It is unfortunate that this pain syndrome is very rarely correctly diagnosed. It is so rare that the family physician or neurologist may not be able to um, recognize it or diagnose it in a timely fashion. However, when it's diagnosed and a correct diagnosis is made, microvascular surgery is highly effective and can really provide the patients with excellent quality of life. So I'm more than happy to provide additional help in your care if necessary, and please feel free to contact me. Thank you.